There are a lot of jewelry designers out there and you need to be able to speak succinctly in just a couple sentences about who you are as a brand and what differentiates you. You are listening to Thrive by Design, business, marketing, and lifestyle strategies for your jewelry brand to flourish and thrive. Let's get started. Welcome to the Thrive by Design podcast, episode 140. I am so excited to be here today because I have a very special guest, Sabina Hitchin of Press for Success. And for those of you who don't know Sabina, she is a firecracker and she is just an amazing PR expert. She's a former teacher, just really incredible. And the thing I love about her so much is just her incredible infectious energy, her knowledge and excitement about PR and her sort of like, I don't I don't know if I would call it confidence or whatever it is, but just like her belief that anyone can get PR if they actually want it. And she teaches you how to do it. So I've had Sabina on the show many, many times before. I'm going to link all of the previous episodes in the show notes of this podcast, because they're all such good stuff and you definitely don't want to miss it. But I'm having Sabina on again, because we were chit-chatting the other day and we talked about how like I felt so behind because for me, uh, 2018 was going to be the year of PR. Well, I haven't done anything yet. It's already March and I'm feeling frustrated that I kind of feel behind. And she was like, Tracy, we need to do an episode about this. We need to talk about it and we need to get your designers moving towards getting PR for themselves because it's really not that hard. And with just a few hours a week sliced out in your time block day, like we teach you over here at Flourish and Thrive Academy, you can pitch PR every single week. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how to jumpstart your PR plan in today's episode. And it's a super fun one. I'm also going to share with you a really amazing masterclass that Sabina and I are going to be doing next week. On March 20th, we're going to be hosting How to Design Your PR Pitch. And this is a great opportunity for you to learn basically how to write a PR pitch that editors actually want to open, which is super fun. So half the work is done right there. She's going to break it down for you, make it really easy so that you can start pitching right away. And it's a totally free masterclass. It's going to be next week, March 20th at 3 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to have all the details to sign up below, but you can also head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash PR pitch masterclass. That's PR pitch masterclass, uh, just PR pitch masterclass. And you'll be directed to a page where you can Join us for the masterclass, sign up and get all of Sabina's goodness because you're going to love it. So I'm excited to dive right into the episode. But before I do, I love to take a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Whatify. Whatify is a great software platform that allows you to split test, AB split test your images on your Etsy shop so that you can get better conversions and more sales. And if I have to hear another designer saying that their sales are down on Etsy and they're not using Whatify, I'm going to get super annoyed because, (laughs) and I say that jokingly, obviously, but you know, like, you know, everything's changing. Etsy's algorithms are always changing. So you got to do what you can to get more conversions and more sales on your Etsy shop. If that's your chosen platform to do sales. So here's a little bit more info about Whatify. It has, it's a state of the art analytics platform and it helps you determine which of the exciting product photos that you have are the ones that are going to bring in the most sales. What if I uses, as I mentioned before, a technique called AB split testing to, and this is used by businesses like Google and uh, Netflix, and we use it over here at Flourish and Thrive Academy to test what actually converts better. And that's what you're trying to do is to get people to actually buy your products on your Etsy shop. So check out Whatify, definitely. Whatify also has a blog that shares a little bit more about split testing and how to improve your Etsy sales in all capacities. And they're also offering a really awesome experience for Flourish and Thrive designers. You'll get half off your six-month subscription if you head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash Whatify. Then you can enter the code as you're checking out Flourish and Thrive. All right, go ahead and check out What If I right now and or after you listen to the episode, actually. <laughs> and also have links in the show notes, so don't you worry your little face off. All right, let's dive in. 
Well, I am thrilled because I have one of my favorite people here today, Sabina Hitchin, and I'm talking like I'm a, from a rodeo or something. <laughs> I don't know why. Because we're excited. We are always so excited to talk to each other. We're laughing and chit-chatting. And before, as we were just starting, uh, I said, Sabina, this is my year for press and I haven't done anything yet. So what am I supposed to do? And she's like, oh, honey, you got plenty of time. So today, Sabina, thanks so much for being here today. You're so welcome. I'm so glad we're here because exactly like you're saying, like it can be anybody's year for press. They just have to take action. Take action. So here's the cool thing. Sabina is one of our SOS coaches. She's also the mastermind behind Press for Success. And she has an amazing masterclass coming up. A free masterclass that we're going to be teaching. She's going to be teaching. I'm going to be sitting there listening to her teach. (laughs) (laughs) Taking notes. And taking some notes. But how to write that perfect PR pitch, which we're super excited about. And she, you're just launching something super fun. Your press for success masterclass for jewelry designers, which we're going to talk a little bit about later too. Exactly. So they're never going to, we'll talk about it later, guys and gals, but you're never going to have to wonder like, am I doing it right again? Or why isn't this working? Because we're going to teach you. Teach we're going to teach you. And the cool part about Sabina is that she's not only one of our SOS coaches, she was also one of our mastermind coaches last year. She is a PR whiz. You've probably seen us do a ton of Facebook live videos together. We love hanging out and we have so much fun. So this is going to be sure to be a super fun interview today. And we're going to be talking about jumpstarting your PR plan because I know that at the end of last year, I was like, 2018 is my year for press and I'm going to be reaching out to all these journalists and editors and I haven't done a single (laughs) thing, a single dot single thing. So Sabina, we're going to dive into this. Like, what do you do if you're like totally scrambling at the last minute? So first and foremost, before we dive into some of the hot topics that we're going to chat about, do you have people who've been hiding under a rock and don't know who you are? Just a brief like background. A little quickie. So I am Sabina. I'm like your PR fairy godmother. I used to be a teacher, an educator, and a curriculum designer. So teaching is my jam. But then that was when I was in the Midwest and I moved to New York City. Long story, very short, I became a publicist. I started my own PR agency. I specialized in small business owners, experts, and entrepreneurs with a big focus on jewelry designers. It was just so, I love jewelry because it It evokes so much emotion and meaning whenever you wear it. So I had a lot of fun sharing their stories. So now I've combined both of my past careers and I teach PR to entrepreneurs and designers and makers of all kinds. And I have great joy. And so I just think that PR publicity should be accessible to everyone because it's one of the biggest power plays you can make for your business and it's free. It only costs you like your time and your brain, which are very valuable. So, but I'm not going to charge you money for it. So again, that's why you need to know PR and I dedicate myself to teaching it. I love it. And she's such a good teacher, you guys. And she, br- she really brings it <laughs> at our live events. Uh, Sabina has spoken for the last couple of years at our live event. Flourish and Drive Live is coming up in September. Be there. That's still a long time away, but it's not going to, it's going to come up on us like a, like a storm pretty mm-hmm. soon. And Sabina and I always have a blast and she, people like literally like can't stop staring at Sabina because she's like, <laughs> so gorgeous and so animated and so much fun. And she just really brings it every time. So, okay. So let's get to the the super nuts and bolts. Okay. So I'm like your perfect avatar right now, because I totally said that 2018 is the year of PR and I haven't done anything. (laughs) So, uh, you know, I'm kind of feeling behind and like, there is no chance for me this year because I'm waiting because I know what editorial calendars look like. So even though I haven't done anything in the first quarter, and I'm sure some other designers in our community haven't done anything, maybe it's because they're intimidated or don't know where to start. The sad part with me is I do know where to start and I'm just being lazy or busy, (laughs) one of the two. So is it too late? And then how, how can we just get this going? Okay, so first of all, everyone listen up. It is not too late. It's not even too late to get publicity for yourself in 2018 until like the end of 2018. So um, just remember that I've actually, with the things that I haven't been doing lately, the things that I have, other things in my life, just like you have PR that I haven't done. And so I have this quote from Liz Smith, the uh, the former gossip columnist, and uh, it sits on my desk and it says, begin somewhere. You cannot build a reputation on what you intend to do. And I think that's so important for PR because we all have these ideas of what we're going to do. And for many reasons, we don't do it. So we need to commit right now, whenever you're listening to this, you're here for a reason. You probably have a sneaking suspicion you should be doing PR. So we're going to commit to doing it. 
And if you're a jewelry designer, especially now is a great time to make PR part of your life because whenever you begin, the moment you decide to begin, you start building these relationships, just at the very least, because you're starting to reach out to people. And if you're being strategic, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later today, you're like very much going out proactively and building relationships mm -hmm. with people. So the minute you start, that starts happening. And then something magical happens because then the press start thinking about you for different opportunities. And if you start flexing your PR muscles now, like in March or April, any time in the year, but let's say springtime when you're listening to this and you start getting active, by the time it gets to summer, you're going to be head and tails above everyone else who's just starting out. And that's important because in the summertime, they're making holiday gift guides. So if you wait until summer, you're going to have to build relationships yeah. and practice pitching. But if you start now, when it comes July, you'll be ready to pitch holiday gift guides. So that's just one example of why it's never too late. And not only is it not too late, it's just important to begin. The minute you begin, everything gets easier. The minute you begin, everything becomes easier. Great advice, Sabina. I love it. So one of the, what's one of the most important things begin, listeners can actually begin working on now to instantly increase their chances of getting publicity? Because that's, that's sort of like another thing. Like people are like, oh, well, I don't know if I'm ready or blah, blah, blah. Okay. So yeah, because you need to have action steps, right? I want everybody, I really hope everyone listening to us today listens and decides to pick an action step and just go for it. So one of the most important action steps to me above everything else is beginning to make relationships with the press. And I said that before, and I'll say it again, because people help people they like, right? And these days with the internet, there's no reason you cannot have relationships with the press. I'm making new ones all the time, and half the time I'm making them for my cell phone or my apartment. So you don't have to be in New York City, you don't have to be super famous, but you need to get out there and start doing media research. Like, Make an appointment with yourself to read magazines. And here's a big thing, jewelry designers. When I talk to people and say, okay, where do you want to be? Or where are you pitching? I feel like sometimes <laughs> they think too small. So yeah. I want you to think big. I want you to walk to a Barnes & Noble or a store or a magazine space, look online at magazines, and don't just say, I'm going to choose one obscure niche magazine about jewelry design. No, I want you to go to Real Simple or Oprah Magazine or People Style Watch or look at the dot-coms, Refinery29, Pop Sugar, Racked, Vogue.com. Like, really think, like, where does my jewelry deserve to be and you need to think big that way and then once you know you need to do the work to get to know who's covering my beat who's doing stories about jewelry like mine etc so all of that it's not a secret how you do that it's all right there in the magazines and in the website so you need to start taking the steps to do that and I always say begin with jewelry magazine research like places you could find jewelry again lifestyle magazines dot coms your local newspaper but really expand where you've probably been giving yourself permission to look you know what I mean yep yes I do and I think a lot of us think small because we're like oh, yeah. I haven't done PR in a while or I haven't done it you know and girl I'm busy <laughs> yeah and gonna fit this in so like how do you are there shortcuts or anything that you could do to to make it faster. Yes, apps. Totally. And I want to tell you, you're all hearing this first here. I've never talked about mm. these, but um, as Tracy first. knows, so my husband's in the media. So he has to read like massive amounts of media at the same, like every day, all the time. So he knows the shortcuts. And one day I was talking to him and I thought, these are great shortcuts for entrepreneurs. I'm writing these down. So let's say I say to you, okay, study the magazine, study the dot coms, get to know their content. And that sounds overwhelming because you have a lot to do. So there are three ways I sort of cut the nonsense out of my PR work, make it a lot more efficient and streamlined. And the first is using an app that Tracy and I recently discussed on a Facebook Live, but in case you missed it, it's called Texture, T-E-X-T-U-R-E. -E. And Texture, for listen, like $9.99 a month, gives you access to any magazine ever from your iPhone, like your iPhone, your iPad. So all the monthly magazines that you're looking at, whether it's a Red Book or a Real Simple or an InStyle or a Harper's Bazaar, you can access them all on texture. So you can study them. You can look at their masthead where all of this information is found. Like all of that is in texture. So $9.99, you got to have it. Um, the next app I recommend- $9.99, you got to have, you got to be an affiliate for that girl. Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm not guys. I'm just like, wait a minute. 
$9.99 is like the cost of a magazine these days. I know, and right? It's so expensive. And now you, and I looked, I tested it out. I could see everything I needed to see. So I could search for the right editors and not have to purchase the whole physical magazine. So you're not wasting trees. You're saving money. Um, the second app I love, it's a good one. It's called Feedly, F-E-E-D-L-Y. And Feedly is great if you say to yourself, okay, you know, I really want to be in in style.com or I really want to be in Red Book or the New York Times, whatever it is. And I need to get to know the content they're covering or I want to see all the people who are covering jewelry designer content. So Feedly is an app that you choose the categories. You can choose what media outlets you want to study or the themes or the topics and they will feed those articles into your app. So every day you can say, okay, what posts did the New York Times accessories designers do? Or what posts did People Style Watch do? So it's all fed right into your phone so you don't have to do the work searching. And that saves Is you Is it time. for all types of media? Sorry to All types of media.com. Anything that's aggregated online so they can email it to you. So you can check the headlines. And that really helps you as you're studying the press you want to be in because it feeds it right into your phone instead of you having to go out and check all the different, maybe you want to study 10 different editors, but you don't want to have to search for their work every day. So you can program that into Feedly and they'll feed those editors content into your phone. It's so much faster. Um, and so it's, as you de- as you dig into media research, that's going to help. And the last one I love, and you might've heard of it, but I live on this. And this is especially when you're starting to do outreach, right? And you've got to send emails to editors and that can be so overwhelming and you want to look like a good writer. You don't want mistakes. So I use Grammarly for that. And that is my go-to app for that because it edits. I love Grammarly. I use it. It saves you for everything. And PR is so important in terms of communication. So it's not just the spelling. It's like, is this a run-on sentence? Does this make any sense? And that really matters when you're reaching out if you're not a pro. So those are my shortcuts. And Tracy, tell me, you tell me, do you want it? Should I give our listeners a few more tips beyond just the media outreach? Yeah, let's do it. So I was just thinking, guys, so you're going to get so psyched doing the media outreach. You're going to say, okay, what is next, Sabina? Let me add them. Because what happens is, I pinky swear this to you, the minute you start reading magazines and looking at dot coms and just making the time to do that, stop all the questions like, I don't have time. I don't know how to do it. Where do I begin? Just begin, right? And then you'll start finding all these homes for your story. You'll say, my jewelry does belong there. Or I really think I can pitch a feature of myself as a jewelry designer to a local newspaper. So all these ideas are going to start stirring inside you, I promise you. So then you'll say, I need to dip my toe in. Like, where do I even begin? So I wanted to give you a couple pointers on that too. So the first thing I want all of you to do, and you can begin doing this as you're listening, after you listen to us, is to revisit your core messaging. Because here's the thing, there are a lot of jewelry designers out there and you need to be able to speak succinctly and just a couple sentences about who you are as a brand and what differentiates you. So I love this. And you want to know why? And I'm sorry to like mid sentence because last week's episode is all about creating a brand story video. And that's what the story is all about. And so you could just like take a small hook. This is like great practice from that. And you can use a very similar one. I mean, you don't probably want to cut and paste everything, but you can have like your basic like elevator Mm -hmm. type thing that you use in every single pitch. So you're not thinking about it so much. You totally can. I always call that like my brand intro sentence. I just have my own vocabulary for what I do with things. And you need that because you're going to reuse it all the time. Because when you think about it, your core messaging is what you are teaching people to think about your business. So you want to repeat it. It should be everywhere. Like everywhere people go, You want them to know what your brand is, right? What it stands for. They all want to repeat something similar. I want people to know, oh, Sabina, oh yeah, she is all about that PR. She talks about courage. That's her jam. You want people to repeat that about you. So perfect timing universe that you're already working on that because you need to get that core messaging down pat so you can use it for this media outreach. So that's one thing you want to revisit if you haven't done it lately. And another thing I want you to commit to you when you're listening to us today is, all of this you're working on when you're studying the media and you're fantasizing about places you're going to pitch eventually is that you're housing it somewhere because you can't just have all these thoughts in your head or on a whiteboard or like a post-it. And so you want to create some kind of PR home base. That's what I call it. Um, For those of you who join me in my jewelry masterclass, we give you those tools and templates, but you need a 
home for all your work so it's organized yeah. because you can start working from that home. A lot of the stress we create ourselves when we're doing PR because we're disorganized. Yeah. Right? We're not following it step by step. If you do the research, if you figure out your core messaging, you break it into steps. It's not that scary. It's much easier to take action. You can p- create a PR pitch folder in a Google Drive too. Completely. I, everything I do is on Google Drive, hand to God. Like I have my media contact list there because I could be, and it's true, once I was once I was in like a car on a road trip in San Francisco, but I needed a media contact information, I could pull it up on my Google Drive on my phone and there it was. So you really want that. So I want you to get those things moving. And then I want you to not feel overwhelmed because I know when something's new, that feeling of overwhelm can creep in. So as you're doing this, one big thing that I've seen with our SOS gals and the masterminds last year was as you're deciding to commit to PR, you need to establish a PR workflow. So, and this is going to be helpful to all of you who yes. might already be thinking, uh oh, it's already too much. Like this already feels like too much. So it doesn't have to. So here's a quick hint on some PR workflow. And Tracy, I'll give you a little cute, a little cute poster that you can include with this podcast. If they oh, I love it. Because I love a visual. I mean, I'm a visual person. So I have a little PR workflow for my week. And I promise you every jewelry designer who does this calms down about it. So on Mondays, we call it the day we do our research or the day we do any copywriting we have to do. And I know you're a jewelry designer, so you don't do this 24 hours a day on a Monday, but I make an appointment with myself on Mondays to do some media research. Uh, Depending on your schedule, you choose that amount of time. And I also, a lot that is one of my days when I'm doing pitch copywriting. So if I know I have to write a pitch for Mother's Day in May, or if I have to do a, I'm planning a pitch for summer jewelry stories, I commit that to a Monday. For starters, if you say you're going to do your media research on a Monday, it makes Mondays sort of fun because you know you get to research and be strategic yeah. and read websites, magazines, and that may feel like fun, but it's actually great, powerful PR research. So start the week on Mondays with that research and then the copywriting because if you have a pitch, once it's created, like Tracy says, you put it in a Google folder, you have that pitch done. Otherwise, if you're writing a fresh email every single time you write a pitch, you're going to go crazy and you're never going to get it done. So what do you do? Let's say you're doing your Monday pitch and everything's going great. And then all of a sudden, you know, you want to like pitch a bunch of people. You wouldn't pitch the same thing, right? No. So here's what you do. It's like your Monday, you do your research, you do any pitching. And again, once your pitches are ready for the month or like, you know, how you're not going to do them every single Monday. So you have your pitch now, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is what I call my pitching time. I do that because I feel like it's common sense. Nobody wants to pitch on a Monday or Friday, most likely, but it's nice to have that sandwich. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is when you're pitching. So like Tracy alluded to earlier, we're going to have a um, a free class on how to write the perfect PR pitch so you can all tune in. But you make that framework of the pitch, right? You have your body of your pitch for whatever. Let's say it's a story focusing on some specific accessories you do or like rings you do. So then you have the framework of that pitch, that basic pitch, but you customize it for the different people you're writing it to because you've been researching. So, you know, maybe, you know, that people style watch does a focus on what to wear to work every month. So you can, in that pitch about your bangles, mention something about it going in the what to wear to work column. So you're customizing those pitches, but the beautiful thing is they're done now. You've already created them on a Monday. So then you're just copying, pasting that pitch over, but you're customizing it for the person that you're reaching out to. Awesome. Totally makes sense. Because you've got your Monday, like your research, you're feeling it, you're getting pumped and you do any copywriting on Mondays that you have to get done for the week. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you are free to execute. You might send out five pitches over that three days. Yeah. You might be really into it and send out 10, depending on Ooh. how much you research. And then you take really it into it. I love yeah. it. And then you take it back on Friday and you close it down, you review, you make plans for next week. Cause then you feel like a PR workflow and you're not like chasing to catch up all the time. Yeah. And you could spend literally 30 minutes to an hour a day doing all this stuff. Yeah. I think the thing that will take the most time, honestly, is the research day. Yeah. It's like, totally It doesn't take that long to like copy, swipe, edit a few words in the email and hit send. It, it's not. PR, you guys and gals, listen up. PR is the hardest part is the before. Like the research, it's like you sharpen the axe a lot and then you chop down that tree really quick. You don't come up with a dull axe and spend three days chopping down a tree. So you got to get yourself in strategic, get all focused, get that research in, learn how to write a perfect pitch, and then you execute. And then it feels good to execute. Yeah, totes, totally. 
Okay. So we are going to do a free masterclass about how to write the perfect pitch, which is awesome. So just high level overview when you're writing a pitch, how do you get unstuck if you're like really unclear about what to write in it? Exactly. Well, I always feel like if you're a jewelry designer, you really need, first of all, to know how to write two kinds of pitches. And again, we'll talk to you what a pitch looks like. But the first thing you want to tell yourself right now is I need to come up with a jewelry brand introduction pitch. That's what I call it. Like the general pitch you will always have on your person in your Google folder that is a general introduction to your brand. So if you're meeting someone new, you're introducing yourself to a new editor, everything is right there laying out your pitch. The second one is a more focused one about specific pieces or collections. So those are the two kinds of pitch you always need in your PR tool belt. And the beautiful thing is pitches should always, in my opinion, follow the same format because depending on the teacher, you can be taught a million different ways to pitch. But I think pitches need to be clear and concise and succinct. And I think we try to be too clever or too witty and you lose the recipient. They just want the information. So Things you want to focus on are creating a framework that your pitch can, so if you know what the framework always is, you can insert whatever content you want in it to make your pitch work. So we'll be breaking down that framework for all of you in our free class on pitching, but just a little overview. So a couple of things you can get started on right now. So you always want to have obviously a subject line that's very clear and a common mistake I see jewelry designers make that I want to have you all stop doing now before our pitch class. And that is don't just put like, you know, new from Smith Love designs them. or like, like yeah. no one knows what that means. So wait, what was this? What was the designs you said? Smith designs. I just Smith made designs. <laughs> it's like Smith people designs. think it's like, you know, breaking news from flower power accessories and no one knows what that means. So you're from the very, no who you are, yes. <laughs> these are my fake jewelry companies. I have a fantasy jewelry company called think pink jewelry because I wear oh pink all the time. But again, like if someone saw an email, that said like think pink jewelry, they're like, what does that even mean? Like what? Yeah. So from the very beginning, they're like it must be Sabina's jewelry. Line. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh God, that's Sabina Hitchin. But um, mm-hmm. you, you need to have like from the beginning, very clear on why you're writing them from the very subject line, like no fanciness, don't try to be secretive. Just give them the information they need in that subject line, what you are, what kind of jewelry you're bringing to them. And then that's the theme we're going to take through the entire pitch. So when you're writing it, it doesn't have to be paragraphs of information that you're spending hours creating. It should be like a simple introduction a quick intro that's basically your core messaging introducing you, bullet points and a graphic. I mean, that's a very shortened version of it. But again, if you know this framework and Tracy and I are gonna like physically show you the framework, it's gonna be so good. Then you're just filling in the bullet points, filling in the introduction, customizing it to your recipient. And it becomes a lot less stressful because the thing with PR, like everything is, once you understand how it's supposed to work, the stress goes away and then you're just, you know, checking off pieces of the list that you need to put together. So it's a lot less stressful, whether it's pitching or whether it's uh, creating a pitch. I love it. Yeah, totally. And we're going to really dial this in in our free masterclass. All the details are going to be below this. I mean, I was about to say video, but we're not on video right now. We're just recording (laughs) in audio. (laughs) We're that excited. It feels like we're on video. I know we're on video. We always do video together. That's why. Okay. So We've been talking about this a lot behind the scenes, but like the landscape of PR is so changing and it's so different and new. So give us the insider scoop, Sabina. What's going on? Like what's changing? What's happening? Like where's it going? There are some big changes and uh, we'll start with some changes in the media. So the media, meaning like the magazines, the dot coms, TV, it's all changing. And here are some of the highlights that you need to know because if you want to have the press cover your story. If you want to be in a magazine, you need to know what's happening in their world. So a couple examples of changes that will impact you trying to get into magazines. Publishing houses are merging. They are buying each other. So for instance, Hearst Publishing, which is where Oprah Magazine is and Red Book Magazine, Good Housekeeping. Hearst Magazine has purchased Rodale Publishing, which is like Women's Health, Reader's Digest, et cetera. So all of their editorial staffs combined And then they broke them apart. So if you are pitching them now, you're not pitching an accessories editor at Red Book Magazine. You're pitching just the accessories group that covers all those magazines now. So again, you see that shift. So yeah, isn't that crazy? They've just assigned people groups now. So they've combined them like fashion accessories editors. So that means a lot of people left, a lot of people moved. And it also means 
in some positive ways, like you pitch one accessories editor instead of them saying, okay, yes, this is good for Oprah or no, this is not good. Now they're like, which magazine should we put her in? So in some ways that can work in your favor. It's less Mm -hmm. outreach, but it's an example of how like things are shifting just yesterday. So just yesterday when I was uh, preparing for this and I was looking at some media updates, I saw that Condé Nast, which is where a lot of big publications are, laid off a huge portion of their fashion staff. So again, oh wow, changes happening constantly. So you need to be tapped into that. So you just know who to send your pitches to. This is why I always, I always tell people don't buy media lists because you become dependent on those contacts and you don't look at the media landscape. So that's one big change. Another big change I think it's important for all of you is what you said earlier, like the use of video. More and more video is so important. And one way that media outlets are bringing that in is by Facebook Live. And so there are a lot of really great opportunities to get press, not just with magazines and dot coms, but coming on their Facebook Live programs as well. And that's a lot of great emotional and personal connection with an audience that you don't get in a magazine. You know, it's so cool. A couple of years ago, it must have been like a year and a half or two years ago, Cosmo asked me to go on their Facebook Live. And we did like an in-studio little demo. I hand sketched on air. I brought some gemstones. It was super fun. Oh, cool. See, that, there's so many new ways. And I feel like that's the thing. PR and marketing and any kind of building buzz for your business is evolving so quickly. So we know that video is becoming a big part of all content, but PR is evolving. Magazines are changing. So that doesn't, I don't say that to intimidate you. I say like, check out what's happening around it. Tap into this world you want to be a part of and then see how you can benefit from it. I think the rise of social media and Facebook live programming and Facebook TV shows brings a lot more opportunity. I think the power of the dot com that is sort of surpassing the magazine in many ways gives you so many more opportunities to get press. There are so many websites that need constant content. So you can be some of that content, both mainstream and really niche content. So I feel like there are more opportunities than ever for your business really to build buzz if you decide to take action on it, like we keep saying. And the last thing I just want to remind people is uh, in 2018, especially people want to know who the business is that they're spending money with. And so when you're deciding to get publicity for your business, I would always recommend that you're not just telling like the story of your earrings or your jewelry, but you're also finding opportunities to tell your story and share your why because Shoppers these days are much more discerning and they want to hear your story. So you have to also look for PR opportunities that allow you to share your aha moment or share your story of your why, whether it's your local newspaper, your local TV or magazines and dot coms that profile designers, because the more people can connect with you, the more they're going to be loyal to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is such great advice, Sabina, as always. (laughs) Um, Are there any other changes that you see coming, like moving forward in 2018 with PR? I really feel like one, another thing I like to watch is there's obviously the rise of the influencer, but there are also like a lot of freelancers out there and like on-air personalities. When we were at Flourish and Thrive Live, Mm -hmm. yes, last year, Don Del Russo was there and Pamela Peckerman. And these are women who are influencers in their own spaces, who are doing TV segments, doing a lot of press. So I would say these people are on the rise. They are on-air experts. They're on TV. They're on their Facebook live shows. They have big followings. So one thing I would say as well is as we're expanding our view of what media is and who is media is to connect with women like this as well and form relationships with them because they are growing their own brands. And so they'll take along brands with them that they have relationships with. And I think about this, one example is um, Pamela Peckerman, who spoke at Your Flourish and Thrive Live. And it was there that she met Blooming Lotus Jewelry. Yeah. And yeah, since then, well. the two of them have been working on so many projects. They're on each other's Insta story. There are all these places. And that's where stuff is happening, my friends. So like, don't limit your view of what opportunities are out there. Pamela is posting brands on her Insta story and I'm shopping off her Insta story. So there's yeah. like a whole new landscape, but it shouldn't be something that overwhelms because the same rules apply, right? If you can write a good pitch for a magazine, you can write that same pitch for an influencer or a dot-com editor or a woman like Pamela or Dawn that go on TV. I um, My mom used to say when I was younger, if you can draw a small circle, you can draw a bigger circle. So whatever you learn in PR, you can apply to all these different platforms. 
That is amazing advice, Sabina. I love your mom. I want to meet her. She is the, she's actually on her way to me right now. I got you guys. I'll, I'll have more golden nuggets for the next time we speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Sabina, thank you so much for being here. Before we go, tell us a little bit about your masterclass and your PR for jewelry designers course. Yes. So two things. First of all, um, as you all know, teaching is my passion, but PR is. And I know it can be overwhelming and it can be like, where do I start? And it's also hard to learn those things. So I'm going to bring it to you in two different ways. First, you want to make sure you are with Tracy and I for designing the perfect pitch class because it's going to give you everything you need to know to learn how to write these pitches. And this, but then you have a pitch. Where do you go with that? Right? So we and my team over here have created a Press for Success, Jewelry Designers PR Masterclass. Uh, Press for Success is the name of all things PR education in my business. And this is a specific PR masterclass only for jewelry designers. We're going to break down every single part of the PR process. And the best part is we do it in 20 to 30 minute episodes. You like, you watch your favorite episode, you watch what you need to know, you download the tools and the templates and the scripts that go with it. And before you know it, you'll be on your way. So it's, it's super good. I'm really passionate about it. And I can promise you that it's going to make a big impact, not just on you strategically, but also confidence wise. Super easy peasy. I love it. And we love making things easy over here. So exactly. It doesn't have to be hard. Doesn't have to be hard. Does not have to be hard. All right, girl. Thank you so much for being here today. As always, such great value. I'm excited to share this. And I'll have all the details about when the masterclass is happening be next week in the show notes below. Thank you so much. And Sabina, thanks for being here. You're welcome. I'll see you guys there. Thank you so much for listening today. What an amazing episode. Remember to sign up for the masterclass with Sabina over at flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash PR pitch masterclass. And you can also check out her press for success for jewelry designers course over at flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash press for success. Thank you so much for listening today. Make sure that you check out our sponsor, Whatify. Grab 50% off your subscription for your first six months using the code Flourish and Thrive. Of course, all of this will be listed in detail over at the show notes. We definitely want to hook you up. That's what we're all about. All right, guys, take care until next time.